We are Makilala TV, the first Filipino-American TV talk show in the New York metro area. Get to know us as we talk to the community leaders, innovators, advocates, and emerging artists who affect Filipino-American life. A happy, healthy life, most people focus on diet and exercise. Unfortunately, behavioral health is one aspect of our wellness that's often overlooked. In today's society, when individuals, especially women, are expected to be strong, showing one's emotions or vulnerabilities seem forbidden or frowned upon. People typically agree to the saying that life is like a roller coaster, however, Acknowledging the emotions that come with being at the bottom seem like a sign of weakness or a failure. Our culture makes us afraid to talk about our struggles for fear of being judged or being labeled crazy or insane. Mental health awareness has been observed in the U.S. since 1949, and yet there is a stigma that still permeates the conversation of mental health issues. I'm Jen Fuhrer. Together with my co-host, Rochelle Ocampo, we welcome you to Makilala TV in today's episode, we will try to understand what mental health is, what symptoms to look for, and how to find solutions. Joining us in the discussion are three leaders in the community. Our guest co-host is Maria Elizabeth Cueva, also known as Attorney Lilly. Attorney Lilly is a specialist at New York State Division of Human Rights. She has over 20 years of legal experience in the fields of higher education, compliance, and diversity. Corporation, labor and employment, immigration, civil and human rights laws. Our guest panelists are Dr. Laura Garcia and Dr. Lailani Crane. Dr. Laura Garcia is a doctor of nursing practice and an associate professor of nursing. She is the state chair for the National Federation of Filipino American Associations and was recently appointed to the Manhattan Community Board District 5. Dr. Garcia advocates for the health and wellness, education, and quality of life. Dr. Lailani Salvo Crane is a clinical psychologist licensed in New York and Pennsylvania. She is the daughter of a World War II war bride from Manila. Dr. Crane focuses her work on multiracial and multicultural identity and challenges, and on supporting Asian American women. Ladies, welcome to Makilala TV. Thank you. So Thank first you. couple of questions to the panel. Where are you the happiest, and what are you most afraid of? Let me start with oh, I'm to answer it. First yeah. of all, I'm elated to be here, yeah. to finally join yeah. this yeah. dynamic team, <laughs> Makilala TV. And I'm happiest always when I spend time with my family. And since I'm a single person, I don't have children, I have what we, I call my fur kids. Oh. They like eight dogs. Oh. So oh. I spend a lot of time with them. <laughs> and travel lot. also <laughs> energizes me. That's a lot. Yeah. I need to forget to see it. Okay, um, I'm happiest when I'm at home. And when I say at home, it does not necessarily mean a physical place or place of residence. It could be, of course, uh, the classroom wh where I'm happiest when I'm teaching. And it could also be a state of, um, a state of mind. I know okay. that when my, when my family is okay from all over the, the country or all over the place, then I'm happiest. Wow, what about you, Dr. Crane? I'm happiest wherever my children are, so I kind of follow them around. <laughs> 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 They're all grown and out of the house, so I kind of follow them. That's good. Yeah. How about you, Michelle? Happiest. Mm. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have, have to work on that one. I have to this work on my here. happy time. <laughs> but, um, Journal. I, it's, it's just whenever I'm with uh, good company, it's, mm. it's really just about surrounding yourself with really beautiful and fun people. Yeah. Oh. Um, <laughs> what about well, you, Jen? Yeah. Oh, that's yes. right. <laughs> when I'm with my family, especially yeah. my children. I think that's what it is. Once you become a mom, that's, that's the most important thing. Yeah. So well, what are you most afraid of? Ah. Uh, Asking um, you <laughs> I know, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Who were you trying to interview? Um, my worst fear is um, disappointing people that, um, that I look up to. 
Hashtag so Asian. Hashtag so Asian. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag so Asian. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag so Asian. <laughs> I'm, I'm most afraid of white supremacy, and I say that because so many of my patients, especially my Asian patients, are deeply impacted by what's going on in the country and what has been going on, and, and so that's a, a focus. Oh. Yeah. What about you, Dr. Garcia? I'm afraid of losing a loved one. Mm. And I'm afraid of um, the void that it would create in my heart and in my life. Yeah. Uh, same with Dr. Garcia. That's also one of my fears, like losing someone you love. But, you know, it's a fact of life. So, you know, you condition your mind to be able to handle, you know. I, it's not just like people I love, but, you know, my pets too, so, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm afraid of being alone. Uh -huh. You were alone last night, Jen. I know. <laughs> That's why she texted me. And you're still alive. <laughs> so I put Coldplay and start crying. Oh. I'm so oh, used yes. to being alone. Yeah. So yeah, as they it's say, good. it's not the same as loneliness. Yes, mm -hmm. so I agree. It's freeing too. Yeah. It's that actually so a silent retreat. That's yeah. probably what I did yesterday. Oh, oh there you go. But I let's talk about like, what do you do when you feel like, how do you know that there's something like you're sad or something to that it's just time for you to talk to somebody or at a different stages before you actually talk to somebody? So, yeah. So, so there's a difference between sadness and depression. Sadness mm -hmm. is what you feel when you're disappointed or when a loved one passes. Depression is just like numb, right? And there's n hopelessness about, there's negative self view, negative view of the world and hopelessness about the future. So that's the trifecta of depression. In children and men, oftentimes it looks like anger or irritation. Mm -hmm. And for some of my patients who have a history of depression, if they start, if they come in and they're like, oh, I'm so irritated with my roommate or my husband or my whatever. And I'm like, mm, maybe we're heading into another depressive episode. Let's oh. talk about that. Let's address I, this. I would never think that, that those two would be so interconnected, yeah. irritability and spiraling into right. depression. Yeah, yeah, because it's just like you, people start losing the ability to handle uh, impact. And also for men, I say mm. a lot of men have two speeds, happy or angry, mm. because it's unacceptable for men to show a range of emotion. You know, men are supposed to be strong, boys don't cry, that sort of thing. You know, so um, I work on with everyone sort of expanding their ability to recognize a variety of emotions, but that's like the canary in the coal mine. You know, if you feel like getting irritable about everything and having mm -hmm. no patience, then maybe you're heading into a depression. That's good to know. Mm -hmm. What about new moms, new mothers? Okay, um, but first of all, I concur with um, Dr. Crane, but with new moms, they, after delivery, women actually um, experience different psychological feelings yeah. and uh, that can actually impact their their take how they take care of their babies yeah. so when we see that moms do not um, so sometimes they they don't um, touch their babies they don't look at their babies mm. um, the way they, they um, they they're supposed to that can give us a clue yeah. but that can also be difficult to to um, distinguish whether it's just a normal reaction mm -hmm. that can be a postpartum sadness or, or postpartum blues and um, but with later on if it um, persists for days or for weeks then that can actually yeah. be become a postpartum depression dr. crane dr. Garcia earlier on Jen Jen touched upon the stigma that's associated with you know, mental health. Mm. Uh, so, especially among Filipinos, which is uh, predominantly Catholic. So, when we acknowledge depression leading to suicidal tendencies, it's a taboo ta topic. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, in your cases as uh, professional therapists, um, how do you pinpoint that and how do you, how are you able to, you know, find out that there's a need for some sort of intervention if they're not willing to speak up. Mm. I think that's hard to, to see. If in a family, if you see someone isolating or someone, you know, like you said, with a new mother, not able to really attend to her baby normally, let's say, then that might be an indication that like, hey, you want to talk about it. You know, I think al always like we at home, if you notice something's different about your loved one, your friend, family member, you know, you might inquire like, hey, is, is everything okay with you? And typically people are like, I'm fine, I'm fine. Um, and also, you know, my family is like, we don't air our dirty laundry, which yeah. means you don't talk about anything. Yeah. So I think it's difficult to, um, 
to sort of insert yourself, but always just check in. You know, we know each other quite well, and so we can tell if the mood has shifted. Mm -hmm. I think it's true with the teenagers. I mean, mm. you have to just like check in. We're so mm -hmm. busy with social media, with electronics, that mm -hmm. sometimes you forget that they need, you know, they need like hello, um, you right. know, they need to unplug. I mean, especially there's this, they call it fear of missing out. Right? FOMO. Yeah, FOMO. <laughs> FOMO. Yeah, yeah. Big, and yeah. I mean, the kids, they feel like they have to go travel, take a picture, take, you know, like there's, there was a Jen, study. Jen, we do. And then, like, they have, they can't wear the same clothes and the same yeah. um, yeah. Instagram yeah. posts. Yeah. But it's causing a lot of kids depression. Yeah. And, yeah. and actually, it's thinking bad thoughts, saying that, you know, maybe I'm not as cool, maybe yeah. I'm not. I mean, how do we. As you know, as parents or future parents or as an, you know, a godmother to uh, yeah. somebody, um, how do you how do you address that? How do you? So, so oh. oh, go ahead. So I think okay. it's really important. It's something that even with the kids' activities, like family meal, as many times a week as you can possibly do it. Mm -hmm. No devices. I feel fortunate that my children grew up mostly before devices, but mm -hmm. even now it's like, don't come to the table with your phone. Like we're going to look at each other and enjoy our food and have a conversation. First, it's not just kids. At I know, this you're time, right, you're right. right. <laughs> even our parents <laughs> are the worst, where we just have to really just unplug. Yeah. Just even like 30 minutes to yeah. not see your, check, check your phone. Agreed. Um, yeah, and Dr. Garcia. Okay, yes, um, especially in the Asian um, Pacific Islanders, in our culture, it's so hard for us to detect who who's really depressed? Mm. Who's really sad? Because we're always mm. um, we're always right. smiling. We're, this we're expected yes. we're expected to yeah. to to put up a, a, a good front, yeah. and um, so we don't know when when to um, when um, when someone is really depressed. But when we see that they don't eat mm. for, for 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 days or don't speak or they don't um, take care of themselves or when they um, post something in, in, on Facebook yeah. or social mm -hmm. media that, oh, my life is, you know, life is a war, I, I, my life is, um, is ending. Um, is ending. Um, that is a clue, that, yeah. is a, that is a cry for help. Mm -hmm. So we need to be able to address that. Um, as a mom, you'd say, let's, let, hey, um, I noticed that you posted something on social media. So sit down and talk and really mm -hmm. listen to So that. as a parent, is it important to monitor, you know, what is being posted by your teenager or your child there to be able to glean whether there's a tendency for, you know, some sort of depression N leading to... Not some necessarily, mm -hmm. not necessarily. They tend to, if you monitor them closely, then the more, the, their tendency f is for them to, to, mm -hmm. to Stand back, yeah. push, push back, and block and, you. And, and yes, block exactly. You as a <laughs> yeah, and unblock you. <laughs> That's the worst. <laughs> so, not necessarily. You don't necessarily have to do that, but you can ask them. Hey, how can I? Can I see? You can ask discreetly. I've, um, I, I, I saw that you posted something wonderful on Facebook. So, can I? Can we? Can you and I take a look? Together. Yeah. How, do you, how, so can we, how can we distinguish between what's real and what's not, especially that's on social media? Because they could be pretending to be, uh, you know, like happy, but mm -hmm. deep inside, mm -hmm. it's not really real. Be, yeah. So, I mean, one thing I noticed because I was in college counseling for several years, if, if someone's just doing nothing but binge watching television, I mean, for hours a mm -hmm. day, that's usually depression. Okay. Also, get to be friends when your kids are still at home. Get to be friends with their friends because the friends right. will yeah. tell you. Mm -hmm. I mean, one of my children came to me and said, Mommy, can you talk to um, my friend's parents because she's suicidal, which I thought was oh a big God. step, you mm -hmm. know, and it's a little awkward to call and say, hey, I'm worried about your child, but it's better than not knowing about it at all. So how do, you, well, how do you deal with parents? Well, no, that's not my child. I mean, it's a mistake, you know, it's, it's not, not really true. Then you ur urge, you know, I guess through your child to s uh, urge them to go see their school counselor or talk to somebody, you know? Um, because yeah, a lot of parents, it's like, this is impossible, this can't be happening. And you don't want to offend someone, but also at some point you, s you have to tell yourself, I did the best that I could and then let it go. Especially with immigrants, it took, I came here, I think I was just fresh out of college and I had nobody. I mean, I have a few family members, but of course, never, I never left home before mm -hmm. I flew to the, the States. Mm -hmm. The first year, I didn't stop crying. Mm -hmm. I was crying yeah. every time, but then, yeah. you know, during the day, 
I can't cry because then everyone's like, if you keep crying, might as well go home. You know, like you're feeling yeah. like you're not strong enough. And mm -hmm. then, and then other issues come up with not sleeping and end up not eating. And then you know, mm -hmm. and then you don't know whether is this normal or do I need to seek help? Mm -hmm. You know, yes. it's just normal depression because I'm in the country by myself or... I think colleges and universities do a, a good job, some better than others, of outreach mm -hmm. to international students, to mm -hmm. immigrant students, to, to children of immigrants or, you know, first time, you know, first ones in their uh, families to attend college or university. Um, plenty slip through the cracks, mm -hmm. but we, we do a lot of outreach at the beginning of the school year to let different groups know that, hey, we're here, no commitment, you can just come and talk if something's troubling you, if you're angry at your professor. I mean, we couch it in a lot of different ways so that people feel welcome. And I'm finding more and more that young people are introduced to mental health interventions through their school counseling centers and then they're kind of hooked and then afterwards they'll pursue therapy you know once they're w in the working world. Yeah I see a lot more of my own colleagues who are um, outward outwardly saying like hey yeah I sorry I can't hang out I have therapy at 2 p.m. Mm -hmm. and it's it's <laughs> just so um, different from what right. I've experienced five years ago. Yeah. This is so probably the first it's time I'm more acceptable now. More acceptable. Therapy. Yes, yeah. to it's seek therapy. It's no longer like, okay, to talk there's about something it. wrong with you. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It, it's it's really such a, a, such a shift in yeah. how we talk about therapy. Like, it's a doctor's appointment. Like, it's just getting a pedicure. Yeah. It's, it's self-care. It is self-care. And, and what I'm finding is that because when I was in college counseling, every single college and university counseling center, no matter how many therapists they have, no matter how many groups they have, are like, have waiting lists. Mm. Every, it's so much, there's so much need. That's good, so, so you mentioned self-care. I mean, we know what to do, to, you know, diet-wise, exercise-wise, but what do we do to be kind to our minds? What do we do to, you know, to make our mind happy? Or, yeah, you know, know. Well, there's actually a bunch of, of things that we can do. Um, exercise is one and going outdoors or going outdoors mm. um biking walking and um feeling the the sun um on your back or in your face because that can actually release endorphins mm -hmm. well walking biking and plus the sunlight that as research actually says mm -hmm. that it boosts your um boost um mental that's probably uh, why during the winter time right. most people are grumpy. Are yeah. more depressed oh, yes, that's and happy uh, lights. Yes. Everyone should have a full spectrum light. You can get them on Amazon. Oh yeah. Yeah, I have it in my office happy and it's lights. just on all day long because right. it's happy full spectrum lights. light and you expose yourself to it and it really does help right. lift For your the mood. Right. Seasonal affective Speci disorder. Yeah, especially right. in winter time when you know yeah. you because never get to go out. Yeah. Even anything. if you don't have seasonal affective disorder, like who likes the short days? So if you have that light, happy light. It happy light. I call it a happy light. Yeah. Yeah. Order that. Yeah, yeah. No, but <laughs> I, I like prescribe them to every one of my patients. Yeah. So okay. I'm like, just get so one, get one, get one, get yeah. one. So I'm gonna talk to my doctor. We have some people prescribing. No, 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 no. Uh -huh. I, was, I was joking. Okay. Okay. I don't okay. recommend okay. prescriptions, good, but I rec strongly recommend. And recommend. also like practice breathing. Right. That's oh, it's, yeah. it's it's so simple. I mean, yeah. I have yeah. I have clients who come to me just so they can breathe. Oh yeah. Because you know, like when they do things on their own. Sometimes mm -hmm. they, they don't know how. Or when or people just get stressed. I mean, I'll watch a patients in session, and they're talking about something stressful, and they stop breathing, and I'll say, breathe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we'll breathe. Mm -hmm. And I was like, do you notice that you're doing that? I said, so check in with yourself, and just periodically take a few deep breaths and relax your body. Because I think everybody, when they get tense, just like yeah, stops yeah, breathing. That's true. With me, because um, just like Jen, Jen, when I was new here, I was like bombarded with all these stresses, and of course, I did engage in some of these recreational activities like going out, movies, but I was Party. also a seeker. I did a lot of self-help mm -hmm. in terms of meditation, mm -hmm. which is part That's of like, good. breathing is part of it, but I entered into like, you know, Deepak Chopra, Wayne Dyer, the mm -hmm. sort, transcendental, mm -hmm. and I thought it helped me calm myself yeah. and be more introspective. So that's one of the modalities that I've, uh, you know, used to be able yeah, to. Yeah, I, I do uh, have an app, Headspace. Headspace. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. it's free. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. And 
I'm still working my way up to do the three minutes because <laughs> my mind wanders off. But if you could, because it's kind of like ADHD, right. because I have so many things in my mind. But yeah, you yeah. need to, you need that every day. Yeah. If you can just, you know, right. sit down and close your eyes and listen to that nice British accent <laughs> telling you like to breathe yeah. in and out. Our, our brains, it's just like yeah. a lot of waves. But when you go within, it's more, it's calmer yeah. within. Yeah. That's the analogy to that. Yeah. Running too. Running, I think. Um, oh, I don't like running. Running yeah. also yeah. helps me, like, <laughs> um, like gives me inner peace. Because yeah. I usually go outside, outdoors, run around the park. You see the trees and, and the little geese over there. And um, yeah, and then put on music. Right. Yeah. Dancing. And what do you think? Yeah. <laughs> no, that sounds like I think whatever works for you. I do yoga, a lot of different forms, but lately I've been doing a style that I just is ashtanga, which is the same every day, but every move is attached to a breath. So what mm. you're forced to be very mindful about right. your breathing. That's true. Um, and I find it very calming. Yeah. And again, running and, and walking, as I would mentioned earlier, releases the feel good hormone mm. or your endorphins. So you be happier. Yeah. Yeah, I have a group family text, like when we oh all nice. like say good morning, whatever, and oh then nice. I have oh in my calendar, it's time to make a phone call. Because oh otherwise, you're wow. trying to pick up the phone connected. and say, yeah. hello, I want to hear your voice. You know, sometimes you need that. That's a really good that point. Is, I've never heard that. That's mm. a good uh, practice. Yeah, recently I was working with a young person who was talking about being very depressed. And they're like, yeah, and they, they'd mentioned at some point they were on a group chat. And mm. I was like, well, you know, you should reach out for support. We should all reach out for support. And I was like, don't you do that in your group chat? She goes, no, we've never done that. And I'm like, why not? And she's like, I'm going to try it. And she did. And, and the response was amazing. They're like, oh, my gosh, this is such a great idea. Everyone was supporting her, loving checking yeah. in with her. Um, and then now they've started doing it. Wow. And it's like, this is a way to use media. I mean, this is a way well, to use we your We do phones. have our caring group with uh, the Filipino-American right. community. So mm -hmm. it's a very positive kind of group. So that's where that's networking, as long as it's like positive people mm -hmm. that you're surrounding yourself with. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, it's we're almost closing, but we still have a few more minutes to go. Okay. But um, I would like you to share a little bit to our audience, um, like what they can do to to live. As I said, my hashtag Happy Simple mm -hmm. Life. But mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, well, first of all, um, who want to start? Sure. Michelle? <laughs> yeah. No. Um, I mean, for me, it I, I'm just starting to practice different habits of being more mindful mm -hmm. of breathing exercises. So just taking basically trying to take that headspace <laughs> app to the next level. Um, but yeah, just being present and um, practicing breathing. Mm -hmm. I think um, water, drink a lot of water. We mm -hmm. all need oh, it. Yeah. Um, okay. But sleep is really, really important. So I really lean on good sleep hygiene. You know, bed is only for sleeping and sex. Mm. Um, no <laughs> electronics <laughs> at all an hour before bedtime. Go Ooh. to bed and wake up at the same time every day. And it does wonders. I mean, for those of us who are aging, for everybody, sleep is paramount because it makes everything easier. It's actually, if you don't have enough sleep, it affects your um, mental yeah. growth. Oh, yeah. So, and, and when you sleep, um, your body works a lot, whether it's, yeah. you know, releasing energy fuels and you know like because you're burning calories when you sleep yeah. so in your mind in your active. mind yeah mm -hmm. especially when we get older it's important <laughs> um so, <laughs> <laughs> so it's important that's what my husband is telling you have to sleep yeah. because mm -hmm. before you know it your mind you know won't work as well if yeah. you if you're sleep deprived plus if you're sleep deprived it's really um you get grumpy and yeah not a good, not a good place to be at. How about you, not Dr. Lord? Okay, um, mental illness is as real as physical illness, and um, although there's been a great change, as Rachel said, that um, there's now um, better, better uh, people look at mental illness better at this point. There are still studies that say that mental illness, there's still stigma mm -hmm. um, around it. And we have to break down that stigma, okay? And we have to um, show respect to these um, individuals. And we have to have awareness that it's really happening, give education, and most of all, that there should be a place for them to, to, to go to. Yeah. Okay, what about you? Uh, with me? Um, you know, always treat life as a gift. 
And so uh, when you treat life as a gift, you value it, share, go out of yourself, count your blessings, always mm -hmm. faith. Faith is important. There's a Bible uh, quote, cast your burdens upon me, those who are heavily laden. So that's important. Be kind first to yourself and then to others because you don't know, you know what they're going through, the, mm -hmm. the struggles mm -hmm. they're going through. Yeah. Be compassionate and you know seek help if you need help don't be ashamed of being judged and um smile and have a light heart oh <laughs> i can't believe this went so fast yes. oh, that was like really like our panel we gotta have like a conversation outside the show and then just have over coffee or something yeah. <laughs> thank you so much thank you thank you, thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you. lailani if i could call you uh laura lily yes. mm -hmm. Thank you so much for sharing your expertise. Thank you. It's, Thank you. it's been a pleasure. Rochelle and I are so honored to have you on our show. To our viewers, thank you for inviting us to your homes. We hope that you enjoyed our show and learned that there are people who break your heart to pieces, but there are people who piece mm -hmm. them together. In this life, it really does not take much to make someone happy. Don't be surprised what a simple hello and smile can do to make someone feel loved. As always, as everybody said here, let us always remember to be kind be true, be fierce, and do things that tickle our heart. And if you need help, do reach out to someone. There is always someone who will listen. To the cast and crew, thank you. Maraming salamat. Sa uulitin. Until next time, here at Makilala TV. Thank you. Oh, my God. Thank you.